Hi, I am Parneet Jaggi and we are going to continue the series of lectures on T.S. Eliot's Wasteland and in this lecture we are going to be discussing in detail the first section of the Wasteland, the burial of the dead. Now as we know out of the five sections that he has divided the poem into, the first section is the burial of the dead which itself indicates that it has a lots, lots, of, lots of things to do with death. So basically the burial of the dead means spiritual death, spiritual decadence of the wastelanders of the present civilization. So when we talk of this section, primarily he establishes some of the core themes of the wasteland in this section, like death, burial and rebirth. Apart from this, he also hints at the impact of the First World War, especially on the people of Europe. Now, regarding these mythical allusions, Eliot himself admitted that his research into vegetation rituals and ceremonies fed into the wasteland. And we also talked in the earlier lecture about the influences of James Fraser and Jesse Weston on these mythical allusions. Now, this section takes its title, The Burial of the Dead, from the burial fertility and the burial service of the Christian church rituals. Now it is made up of four vignettes, each seemingly from the perspective of a different speaker. Now here we shall take into consideration selected extracts of the poem. We cannot uh, take up the entire text in such a short span of a lecture, but I shall try to take up the thematic concerns of the entire poem. So with the selected lines, we begin with the poem. April is the cruelest month, breeding lilacs out of the dead land, mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. Now April here is a symbol again. In general, in our routine life, in a layman's language, April is a symbol of beauty, spring, rejuvenation, regeneration. But here he says, April is the cruelest month. Why cruel? because we are wastelanders, we do not like rejuvenation, we do not like regeneration, our soul is dead, we are spiritually dead and degenerating as a civilization, so we do not like April, it is cruel for us, for it breeds lilacs, lilac flowers out of the dead land, which mixes memory and desire, now memory is past, desire is future, so we do not like it, Stirring dull roots with spring rain. Spring also gets rain along with it. Rain is also a symbol of rebirth, regeneration. But our roots are dull. So the spring rain is trying to revive the dull roots and bring out the lilac flowers, the beauty. But we do not like it. Next he says, winter kept us warm, covering earth in forgetful snow, feeding a little life with dead tubers. Now winter again we know is a symbol of spiritual death. We know in European countries while in winter they do not have much activity, they are as good as dead. So life comes to a standstill. So winter kept us warm. We were comfortable in winter. On the contrary, being wastelanders we were happier in winter because earth was in forgetful snow feeding a little life with dead tubers. So we were happy with the inactivity of the winter. So these are symbols. April is spring and winter is like forgetfulness, death, life and death. Now he comes to quote uh, a modern wastelander who is a German princess by the name of Mary. And here we have the entry of the protagonist, the narrator of the poem, Tiresias. Now here Tiresias is talking to this uh, a German princess whose name is Mary and she narrates her own story where she says and we, when, when we were children staying at the Archdukes my cousins he took me out on a sled and I was frightened he said Mary Mary hold on tight and down we went in the mountains there you feel free and I read much of the night and go south in the winter now these lines simply indicate towards the carefree the careless life the sensual life of this girl, this modern wastelander who calls herself a princess and she is narrating her experiences to Tiresias who is the narrator, the spokesperson of this poem. 
Then we have a description in symbolic form of the chaos in the wasteland. He says, what are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of the stony rubbish? Now here, what kind of trees, what kind of fruits that are growing out of stones? He's talking about this, all negative images. He's indicating that nothing spiritual is growing in this barren land of this wasteland where we are living. We just have broken images. So he says, what are the roots that clutch? What branches grow out of the stony rubbish? Son of man and the dry stone, no sound of water, only there is shadow under this red rock. Now we have a number of symbols in these few lines itself. It has a reference to Bible spoken by prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testaments and it describes a wasteland in which the stony rubbish these uh, roots and these uh, dry stones, the dryness, the aridness which covers all our surroundings is symbolic of spiritual dryness. But there is a shadow, there is red rock and there is no sound of water. No sound of water means no hope of revival. But still there is shadow and there is a red rock means yes, there is some hope of faith in God and only that faith in God or Christianity or religion can be, bring back life in our spirit. <clears throat> in the next slides which I have missed here we have uh, two episodes of guilty love which he describes. One uh, passage is taken from Wagner's opera entitled Tristram and Iseld which is a story of guilty love and the second is the story of a hyacinth girl in which this hyacinth girl is admitting to her lover that you gave me those flowers and now people call me hyacinth girls and I have lost all my reputation and I am now neither living nor dead. So these are brief episodes of guilty love which we find frequently in the modern world. Now the next important part of this section is the allusion to Madame Sosostres who is a famous fortune teller. And she is uh, considered as the wisest woman in Europe. But then there is an indication that she is handling an illegal trade. And so she is doing it secretly. Now here a lot of significance has been given to the cards of Madame Sosostris. She deals with tarot cards and predicts the future of her customers. And each card has its own significance in this poem. Because in the later sections of the poem, each card has been magnified, symbolized and presented in the form of different characters of the wasteland. So the first card she's talking about is the drowned Phoenician sailor. Now water is again a symbol of purification, a hope for life and rebirth. But here the character is drowned. So this Phoenician sailor whom he will picturized in the later sections of the poem has been personified as a person who is drowning in water. So water does that double purpose, solves that double purpose of, of killing also, but of reviving also. Then we have a card of Belladonna. Belladonna is a beautiful lady, lady of the rocks, lady of the situation. And she stands for any seductive woman uh, whose renewal of life can be done with the help of Holy Grail. Then we have the card of the man with three staves. Now these three staves point towards the Indian philosophy, the Oriental philosophy that he has taken from the Upanishads. And these three staves of Da, Da means to give, to sympathize and to control. And it shows for the search for spiritual truth and compassion for others. Then there is the card of the wheel that we call the wheel of fortune, the season, of ups and downs of our life and this wheel is round in a circle it turns round and round similarly he in the later sections compares the people of uh, the civilization modern civilization uh, moving around in a crowd walking in a ring and it also symbolizes change then we have the card of the one-eyed merchant now this is later personified presented as mr eugenides from saria who actually um, is a typical trader, a businessman, and his lost eye, one eye can be read as loss of religion. 
Then we have an important card, the card of the hanged man. Now this hanged man is Christ, crucifixion of the Christ. And when she says, Madame Sosostris says that she does not find the card of the hanged man, it indicates that there is no religion in the present world. Now, in the next part of this uh, section, we have a <clears throat> description of the unreal city, which here is London. And he is kind of presenting London as an epitome of the entire European civilization and the entire world, in fact, after the First World War. So he defines this city as the unreal city, London. Under the brown fog of a winter dawn, a crowd flowed over London Bridge, so many. I had not thought death had undone so many. Sighs, short and infrequent, were exhaled, and each man fixed his eyes before his feet. Flowed up the hill and down King William Street to where St. Mary will not keep the hours, with a dead sound on the final strokes of nine. Now all this is is a specific detail of the kind of mechanical routine which is going on with the people of London while they are moving in the form of a crowd, no individuality, no spirituality. They are just a crowd flowing over the London Bridge to various places. This routine is painful, it is aimless and it is soulless. Now towards the last part of this section, there is a conversation of Tiresias with an imaginary person, Stetson. Now this Stetson again, um, is he shows him as an acquaintance of his and he is a representative of any person who has fought wars, who has been in the past and now he is in the present also. So basically his personality is applicable to all men of the modern world. There is so one I knew and I stopped him. Now this is Tarisha speaking, crying, Stetson, you who were with me at the ships at Miley, that corpse you planted last year in your garden, has it begun to sprout? Will it bloom this year? Or has the sudden frost disturbed its bed? Oh, keep the dog far hence, that's friend to man. Or with his nails he'll dig, dig it again. You hypocrite lector, mon semblable, mon frere. Now here, he is conversing, Tiresias is conversing with this person, Stetson, and he is asking him questions about what he did and how, how things happened when we were together, and where is the corpse, the dead body you planted last year. Now here comes in the symbol of the dog. Have you kept the dog at a distance, or maybe it has dug the land with its nails. Now here the dog is a symbol of friendship, loyalty, spirituality. So the dog symbolizes your conscience. Now this is a reference to an old battle between Rome, Rome and Carthage but then it applies to the modern wasteland also. And Stetson is representing any human being, humanity of all times and dog symbolizes conscience. So keeping the dog away is suggesting that modern man does not want to live with spirituality or conscience or morality in any ways. Therefore, this part also suggests that we are facing acute spiritual de degradation and degeneration. And the last line, mon semblable, mon frere, this indicates that he says, we are all responsible for this spiritual degeneration. So this was my interpretation of the first section of the wasteland and this first section was the burial of the dead. We'll take up the remaining sections in the coming lectures. Thank you for now.